What's going on guys? Back for another Table Talk. We got Mike here again. Today we have a very interesting subject that is highly, highly, highly controversial. What qualifications does it take to be in shape? So, we're gonna go right up to get, Mike, what do you think? What qualifications make somebody in shape or out of shape? Well, the first thing I think of is kind of like what you, how your doctor assesses you, like how's your heart rate, your resting heart rate, your blood pressure, your cholesterol levels, things like that, like any sort of medical thing. Like if those are bad, that's not good. Of course, there's some leeway with those, like for instance, uh, you know, guys who might be eating a lot of protein will have higher blood pressure, for instance, but uh, you know, uh, things, there's a little nuance like that. Uh, I would say that's first and foremost. You know, how are your joints, how is your posture, how's your spine? Are you gonna be able to live to 85 plus years old? You know, uh, if that answer is a no, well, fix those items first, whether that's through strength training, doing stuff with your doctor, uh, fix those first uh, before you get a six pack. Six packs will, will come with that, but you gotta fix those things first because, you know, you gotta take care of the foundation before you take care of the rest. Uh, the next thing I would say is kind of, I think it depends on what your lifestyle is. Like if you want to be, you want to be lean and, you know, just be more cardio based and be more of like a cross country runner, or if you're like, I don't know, you don't want to have a lot of mass. So of course that has certain parameters for what it looks like in shape. Like if I went not, if I was looked like this and went to a cross country team, like, Hey, what's up guys? And I'm, I'm considered in shape. Uh, let's go. They'd be like, you're freaking crazy. You're not gonna be able to keep up with us. You are not in shape for this. But flip it the other way around, they came in here and tried to hang with us. I mean, it, it'd be tough at first. Yeah. It would be a learning curve. They'd be, I think they'd be better off coming here than me going there. But yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. but probably. Um, I think it's. I think so. It all depends on what you're looking for in life. So, like for instance, uh, yeah, I, I consider myself in decent shape. I don't think I'm in great shape, but I for what I do for being for like for enjoying powerlifting for being a banker, for being a family man, you know, et cetera. Like I check all the boxes for what it takes for my life to be, uh, for me to be able to fulfill the things I want to do in life. And the third thing I'd say is all the little ancillary things like six pack, uh, muscle, uh, like can you see your muscle definition? Is that the right word? Uh, uh, like how lean are you by five percent? Right, how lean you are. Like, like do you see your your um, your veins your cuts and like how vascular they are? Like little things like that. So, I mean, I would agree with you. Like, obviously, you're gonna have every definition in the book. You're gonna have. Well, can you run a mile under this time? Can you? Do you have this body fat percentage? Do you have? Can you do this exercise for this? Minute? You know what I mean? Like, there's everybody's gonna give you a different thing. I wanted to ask your opinion just that way like we had some stuff that we could like kind of dissect and break down and give them something to kind of think about. Um, so, you know what I mean? Like you have people that say powerlifters are in good shape because they can lift a lot of weight for you know X amount of reps or do whatever, but then they might not necessarily be able to run a mile. Then you have, to your point, the cross country runners who can do the opposite. They can smoke a mile in under five minutes or whatever, and they, but they can't bench their weight on the bar. You know, it's just, it's just different. Then you have bodybuilders who say, like you hear, um, you hear the you hear the word conditioning a lot in the bodybuilding world. Conditioning in the bodybuilding world is talking about how lean somebody is um, and the body fat percentage of that person. So again, there's a lot of different terms that are used differently, just depending on the sport, depending on the athlete, depending on the person, to your point, and the lifestyle that they live. So. For me, and like I'm kind of going a little vague here, um, this is just like qualifications that most colleges have for athletes and stuff like that. And again, not taking anything away from people that work on nine to five or anything like that. I'm just kind of throwing these out there. So uh, body fat percentage was one of them. They wanted guys on average to be between 10 and 12% for optimal performance. And then girls I think was like around like 15% or something like that. Um, the whole reason for that is you're not so out of shape that you can't out of shape as I mean as like higher body fat percentage that like it's putting strain on your heart like you can still do what it is you can do you can perform athletically and everything else without getting worn out um, earlier before we started uh, we were talking about the vo2 max test i'm sure somewhere along the line like every almost every athlete gets tested for a variation of that if not the actual test um, 
making sure oxygen uptake and efficiency is optimal, right? Um, posture, you had mentioned, that's actually an interesting one. So it's funny because like when you talk about posture, there's a lot of different definitions here, okay? And I'm gonna use, I went to a seminar uh, several years ago and one of my friends that Anthony had mentioned on the podcast, J.L. Holdsworth, he's a, he's a power lifter. Ian King is a world-renowned strength coach. He's the guy that invented tempo. So think about that. Like he's yeah. been doing this a long time. Uh, the like grandfathers, godfathers of the industry: uh, Eric Serrano, Ian King, Louis Simmons, Paul Sheck. Like those four have been around forever. Like I said, that like anything that we do on a daily basis probably came from one of them in some way, shape, or form. Not taking anything away from anybody else, but those in my mind are kind of like the originators. Um, so we were listening to Ian King speak, and JL's right beside me. JL is big, like, I mean, he's bigger than what you are. JL's kind of hunched over like this, you know, taking up, he's literally taking up two seats, like, just, you know. And then we were talking, we, the subject of posture came up, and JL said, or muscle imbalances, actually. So muscle imbalances are essentially lagging muscle groups in relation to like what they probably should be. So most power lifters walk with their hands turned in posturally. So if you look, most power lifters are here. Posture, you should be here anatomically, okay? So when JL was sitting there and he said, do you think that you need these muscle imbalances though to get to an elite level of power lifting? And Ian said, I forget the exact words, but it was something to the matter of look at how you're sitting, I'm gonna leave it at that and move on. <laughs> so anyway, JL was just like completely confused and like went up and talked to him afterwards, I don't know what the conversation was exactly. But talking about that in that particular moment, JL had a really good point because to get to an elite level of powerlifting, your posture might not be great, but to in the powerlifting world, you might be in really good shape. Because you can bench five or six hundred pounds, you can deadlift eight hundred, you can squat nine, like whatever it is, you can do something extraordinary that ninety percent of people can't do. But you're an elite level powerlifter, so like you have to be in some level of shape, right? right. Your body fat percentage may or may not be, you know, ten to twelve percent if you're a guy, or fifteen percent if you're a female. But if you're moving some weight, so obviously like you're in some level of shape, right? Yeah. On the flip side of that, you have. Um, you brought up cross country runners. Like if you look at a lot of long distance runners, like they're what you would call almost like skinny fat for the most part. The reason for that is, you know, you don't need a ton of muscle mass in order to run a long distance. That's actually super inefficient. Mike made the joke of him going, Mike's body weight, how much do you weigh? 250. Mike weighs 250 pounds, how tall are you? 5'10". 5'10", 250 pounds of 5'10". Mike running, a 10 One, mile real quick just just mic running mic running let's, <laughs> let's just appreciate the visual <laughs> um, but r him running 10 miles is highly inefficient his body right at this time is not built for that okay his body is built to lift weights and to train that's what he's that's what his body is built to do that's what he's trained his body to do on the flip side of that those cross-country runners they're the exact opposite they're like being pulled they have that very very skinny fat look and that's because that's more efficient for that sport. That's more efficient for that. For powerlifting and weight training, that's not efficient, right? I'm not saying that skinny people can't be strong. I know plenty of people that are skinny as hell that can crank out 100 pull-ups now. Yeah, you know? Andrew, for instance, man. Yeah. Good for him. Talk about uh, going against the grain. And yeah. Like, you know, he's in here, he's, you know. And he's moving some pretty decent yeah. weight. Obviously, he wants to get stronger and wants to put on size, but again, having that body type for so long and like strength training, like some of it is my muscle connection, some of it's calorie intake, some of it's food and everything else. Um, the one thing I do want to talk about is the whole bodybuilding thing though, because like this is a big thing when it comes to being in shape, right? So if you, so if you're a bodybuilder, you're typically walking on stage for a guy somewhere of like roughly around 3%, okay? The true bodybuilders as like the guys that are like in you know the g-string type deal they they're super super lean they're super dry like i mean they've been cutting for weeks and weeks you know classic physique now it's a little bit different it's a little bit softer than that they're still along the lines of that they're still lean as hell and then men's physique i was like three percent when i did my show we can put a picture of that up there right 
Okay, so you can have that picture so then you can like kind of see. I was 3% when I did that. Um, absolutely, like you're miserable at that by 5%. It's like you have no energy and you're like just, you got enough to like walk around and like pretty much do what you gotta do. After that, like you're, you're just tired. You know what I mean? Like you just don't have those fat stores to pull from. So it's different, right? But a lot of people, if I ask this question to, if we did like a hundred person survey, somebody at some point is gonna say, well, do you have abs, right? So one thing is how do you get abs? You know, we talked about, we did the cardio uh, segment here that I hopefully you guys watched. Now talking about this, like we talked about not being able to work a bad diet, not being able to do those things. When I competed for my show, um, or the multiple shows that I did, I did have to do cardio, but I weight trained first, and then I either had to come back in the evening and do my cardio, or I did it after the session. And I always did HIIT training. I never did anything distance. I never did steady state cardio. I never did that. My body just personally does not respond to that the same way it does to HIIT training and or the, like, the lunges that I've been doing uh, here for the month of August. So what is gonna work for you to get those abs? Have you, you said that you were really lean at one point, right? Yeah, there's a point where I was down at 205. How lean were you? Like, did you have a full blown six pack? No, no. I never had a six pack. <laughs> Maybe seventh grade, you could see see something down there, but yeah. nope. I've always, I was this build in ninth grade, and I wasn't 250, but I probably wasn't as uh, like didn't have as much mass, but I mean, I had this frame. Yeah. So like since then it's been, well, you're going to be a lineman, you're going to be a power lifter. And I was like, all right, let okay, me up. Yeah. Shot put, discus, fat man relay. Oh, dude, let's go. There. Use a steak as a baton. <laughs> <laughs> the big ones, what are they called? Oh, like or like the like, dude. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that, then, that's what it was? Yeah, and then once you get done with the relay, you see how far you can throw it. And then whoever grilled the best one. The, the relay. Yeah, it's the relay. Yeah. Did you guys ever like throw it and then try to chase it and catch it? Oh, if you caught it in your mouth, you won instantly. Yeah, you won. <laughs> and if you ate it raw, respect. Even better? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bad cows either. Yeah, it didn't matter. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's completely fine. Completely fine. It's healthy. Completely normal. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to dieting for that and stuff like that, obviously you're gonna to want to eat raw steak. Just very no, 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 I'm kidding. Um, no, there it, it's a very gradual thing, right? So like when I was talking about competing for shows, I both of my preps were 15 and 16 weeks, and I was very fortunate that like I've always had a leaner frame coming from an athletic background and everything else. I was around 8% percent start. So Starting at 8%, me getting down to three, I only have to lose five, right? That's not that big of a deal. You know, over 15 weeks, like that's very, very gradual, right? Somebody who is 20% that has, you know, that 15 plus week thing, like you're gonna be losing some muscle mass along that, you know what I mean? Uh, potentially with that. So dieting is obviously key. You can never outwork a bad diet. Always remember that. And again, we talked in the cardio segment about building a bigger engine. So the more muscle mass you have, the more fat you're gonna burn and everything else. On top of that, this is obviously something that every person comes in for like, Alex, what's the secret, what's the pill? Like, what do I need to do? Like, what supplement do I need to take? I'm like, if you can't even master the nutrition of just eating X amount of times a day that fit your lifestyle and eating X amount of protein, eating X amount of carbohydrates and X amount of fat based on your goals, how the hell are you going to add a supplement to it, which is a supplement that's on top of what you're doing nutritionally? Yeah. How are you just going to put the supplement in and like you're not even going to eat right? Right. Like that's almost like, that's like you driving a 92 Honda Accord. I'm using that because that was the first car that I had. A 92 Honda Accord with a Ferrari body, which is like the <laughs> supplement. And like a piece of shit engine that you got from the junkyard. Yikes. Right, aka Slam and McDonald's like three or four times a day. Like it's just not gonna work, right? It's just not gonna work. Like you're not going to get there. So eating those high quality foods, eating quality protein, carbohydrates, and fats. You have to figure out what's gonna work for you. You have to figure out what, like I said, chicken might work really well for you. Maybe you have a food sensitivity to it. A food sensitivity test is probably one of my first recommendations when it comes to somebody who's not losing weight just by doing the basics. As dumb as what it sounds. And, one of my old clients literally got so pissed off at her husband 
every single time I started like a weight loss competition because I trained both of my training together. He would literally eat one salad a day. He ate like pretty decent. He ate one salad a day. He literally would start losing weight. Every female out there that like is married or like dating somebody that's like in like their 30s, 40s, if not 50s, potentially older, as soon as the guy starts eating salad and they start dropping weight, the female gets pissed. <laughs> like just pissed. Like just wow. because it's like, you know what I mean? That's all it takes for them. But for the woman, it's gonna take more than that. Like every, and, but again, that's hormones, that's everything else. And I'm not saying who, what, where, when, why. It could be the opposite. Maybe the woman eats one salad a day and the guy doesn't. But in this particular scenario, my client, he was eating one salad a day and he was starting to lose weight. She flipped a shit. <laughs> but again, like that's the nature of the beast, right? So when it comes to that, when it comes to losing weight, you have to figure out what's gonna work for you. Um, Mike and his ground beef talk that we had like a couple of things ago, like the uh, the firewood joke, like that. Oh, yeah. Everybody really enjoyed that one. Yeah. Um, I would just put raw beef in foil and throw it in the oven. <laughs> and take it out with oven mitts and just. You burn, you burn your tongue. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is there's is no such thing as spot reduction. So like the cool sculpting and stuff like that now, yeah, yes, it does like kind of do that to an extent, but like there's. I can't make you do like 100 sit-ups and bam, you're gonna have a six pack, bam, like you're gonna look like this. Like you can't do like a thousand curls and like your arm be like super lean and shit like that. Like it's just, that's not how it works. It takes very, it takes a long time. Mind muscle connection that I've kind of mentioned. And if you're not engaging the muscle con consciously, you're not building that bigger car engine, you're not going to be able to really develop those muscle groups. So dieting, longer term plan. If you can commit to something for 15 plus weeks, you're gonna get in good shape. Especially if you're training hard, doing cardio post session that we talked about in the cardio mistakes, uh, table talk, do you have anything else? And if you're like Mike and you can lift the truck, that would, that would be helpful. Find a truck, gut it, start with that, and start throwing sandbags in it, work your way up. <laughs> um, just making sure you're training in the right percentages is what Mike's trying to say uh, with that one. Yeah, that's all I was trying to say. Yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely it. Uh, so, ultimately, this guy. so ultimately what we're going to leave with, uh, so your exact definition, what it takes to be in shape. Outside, like after I've just given my long rant. Uh, is this my opinion this or is subjective? So opinion, I'll give my subjective opinion for myself. So like, what, how do I determine if I'm in shape or not? For one, I want to lift to 85 plus. I mean, I don't care what it is. Like, I'll give up powerlifting to, to lift to 85 plus. Yeah. Just for example, I would give up cereal or oh, steak. Maybe I I would give up steak for 85 plus. Oh God, uh, I wanted my home waiting for me. Uh, that's that's like a general like big picture kind of thing. You make it to like the average age and then some, and like be able to like. You know, enjoy your family, enjoy your life, enjoy your work, like etc. Are you struggling through every day? Yes or no? That's the first basis of health. I mean, if you can't live, you can't, you're, you're doing something wrong, something's gotta be fixed. Yeah. Uh, the second thing is then my lifestyle. You know, I love powerlifting. I don't really like just running or I don't like, you know, swimming or kayaking. Like, this is my. This is my physical activity that I do every day. You completely lied on your resume for this position. I'm just kidding. 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 You said you enjoyed running and kayaking. That was your hobby. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I keep going. You know, I so I want to make sure I can do everything in here. The squats, the deadlift, the bench. If I have those, like I want to be able to do those things. And then finally, like I want to make sure I can do like my job. At a bank and take care of my home and you know raise a family. So like those are my that, if I can do those things to a to an excellent or great degree, then I'm healthy. Uh, and of course then the medical things, you know, heart rate, blood pressure, cholesterol, body fat percentage, etc. Like those things need to be in tune too. That's for me. And then uh, I'd say you know that's pretty average stuff. So like I think that applies to the general population as well. Yeah. No, I would I would definitely agree. Um, I think it's just kind of being in those happy mediums and stuff like that and just making sure you're at the level that you need to be for what it is that you're going to do. 
Um, so yeah, one small caveat, like for an example, if, if you hit all those things I just said, but you don't have a six pack or you don't, I don't know, I don't know what ladies aim for nowadays, but like that's what guys aim for, you know, they, they want a yeah. six pack. They're like, I mean, I think that they just, it's really about like the smaller waist and stuff like that. Like, yeah, there you go. Like, not that they need to add definition, but I mean, it's probably right. close to.